today in this video we will discuss important question related to the ilium bone so let's first start with the iliac crest now this is the iliac crest right this is the anterior part so this is ventral segment of iliac crest and this one is the dorsal segment of iliac crest so with, uh, what are the important attachments on the iliac crest so let's start with the anterior in, anterior superior iliac spine so at the anterior superior iliac spine we have the attachment of lateral end of the inguinal ligament and just below it we have the origin of the sartorius muscle now outer lip this is the iliac crest outer lip of the iliac crest it gives attachment in its entire extent to the facial lata then we have the origin of tensor facial lata just in front of the tubercle which lies 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine so it gives origin to the tensor facial lata and in this anterior two third part we have the insertion of external oblique muscle then latissimus dorsi it lies just behind the highest point just behind the highest point of the iliac crest there is an attachment of the latissimus dorsi muscle now intermediate area of the iliac crest it gives origin to the internal oblique muscle in its anterior two third part and the inner lip it gives origin to the transversus abdominis this is inner lip so inner lip it gives origin to the transversus abdominis muscle in its anterior two third part see in the anterior two third part we have external oblique muscle these all are the muscles of the abdominal wall so external oblique at the outer lip in the intermediate area we have internal oblique and at the inner lip we have transversal transversus abdominis muscle then we have the fascia transversalis and fascia iliacus that is also at the anterior two third part they lies deep to it then quadratus lumborum muscle that is in the posterior one third part we have origin of the quadratus lumborum muscle and attachment to the thoracolumbar fascia around this quadratus lumborum attachment now attachment on the dorsal segment of the iliac crest so we have two slopes here medial slope and the lateral slope so at the lateral slope this is the gluteal surface so at the lateral slope, slope there is a gluteus maximus muscle origin of gluteus maximus and at the medial slope there is origin of the erector spiny muscle and this area it also provides attachment to the dorsal sacroiliac joint and the interosseous sacroiliac joint, ligament sorry now attachment on the anterior inferior iliac spine so at the anterior inferior iliac spine there is an origin there is an origin of the straight head of rectus femoris muscle and it also provides attachment to the iliofemoral ligament now here this portion it is known as the sacropelvic surface of the ilium and this tuberosity it is known as the iliac tuberosity so attachment on this surface so here as we know this surface it articulates this is the auricular surface which is articular surface and it articulates with the sacrum and form this sacroiliac joint so here we have attachment of different ligaments like here we have at the convex margin we have the att attachment of the ventral sacroiliac ligament then here we have the dorsal sacroiliac ligament at the tuberosity we have interosseous sacroiliac ligament and superiorly we have iliolumbar ligament now what are the attachment at the pelvic surface of the ilium so this is the pelvic surface of ilium this is greater sciatic notch so here we have the pyriformis muscle or few fibers of the pyriformis it originates from this surface then at the preauricular sulcus this is known as the preauricular sulcus. So at the preauricular sulcus, we have the lowest fibers of this ventral sacroiliac ligament, and the remaining part of pelvic surface, this entire surface, it gives origin to the obturator internus muscle. Now this fossa, it is known as the iliac fossa. So this iliac fossa, upper two third part of the iliac fossa, it gives origin to the iliacus muscle now this posterior surface of the ilium bone it is known as the gluteal surface now this gluteal surface it is again divided by the three different lines posterior gluteal line anterior gluteal line and the inferior gluteal line into the four different areas which provides origin to the different gluteal muscles so first let's see which are those lines so first one it is the anterior gluteal line now see this is the anterior superior iliac spine this one is the posterior aspect this is posterior superior iliac spine now when you have to draw anterior gluteal line then we have to just go 4 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine then up to the apex of the greater sciatic notch all these lines they reaches to the apex of the greater sciatic notch so 4 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine we have 
from that point to the apex of this greater sciatic notch this line it is known as the anterior gluteal line which is the longest line then posterior so here posteriorly we have the posterior superior iliac spine so 5 cm behind the posterior superior iliac spine up to the apex of greater sciatic notch so this line it is known as the posterior gluteal line and this posterior gluteal line it is the shortest line then we have this inferior gluteal line so inferiorly here we have this anterior inferior iliac spine so from this anterior inferior iliac spine up to the greater sciatic notch this line it is known as the inferior gluteal line which muscles are attached here so this is the posterior gluteal line so the area which lies just below the posterior gluteal line it gives origin to the gluteus maximus muscle then between the posterior gluteal line and the anterior gluteal line this area it provides origin to the gluteus medius muscle and the area between the anterior gluteal line and the inferior gluteal line it gives origin to the gluteus minimus muscle the and the area below this inferior gluteal line it gives origin to the reflected head of the rectus femoris muscle straight head of rectus femoris that is from this anterior inferior uh, iliac spine and this area it gives origin to the reflected head of rectus femoris and at the margin of the acetabulum we have the capsular ligament of hip joint